Okay guys, so uh, today I've got kind of a crazy plan. I'm gonna build me a skid house. Just a tiny one. Um, maybe one I can even throw in the back of my truck. But uh, I've got some lumber over in uh, another town over. My uncle gave me some trusses and they were just a little bit dicey. I sold a bunch of trusses, but these ones I decided not to sell. And so I'm going to cut them up and get my lumber for the skeleton that I need. I'm going to do that right now. And uh, eventually, I've got my 10 by 20 trailer out here. And I'm going to have it so I can pull this skid house right behind the four-wheeler into the trailer. And uh, in that trailer, I've put a bunk bed this year. And so I'm going to be able to pull that trailer with my skid house and my uh, four-wheeler. And I'll be able to stay in the trailer and fish out on the ice with the skid house we're gonna build. Um, I saved some red tin when I built my shop. I've just been saving scraps. I don't even care what it looks like. So that'll be for the roof. And then a couple years ago, I built some duplexes uh, that I own. And um, I had a box of yellow siding left over, vinyl siding. So that's gonna be my exterior. And we'll probably make the door and um, see about the windows I've been giving away little windows over the years and now I'm kicking myself but we'll try to figure out a window too my goal on this is like 20 bucks see what we can do for 20 bucks out of pocket that might just be cheeseburgers so let's see if we can do something build something out of nothing and uh, we'll go get some wood here and then I'll show you the trailer when we get back and we'll go from there thanks for coming along what do they say? Let's go, Brandon. I guess. Okay, so here we are at my units. We've got Christy showed up. Chris got the day off, I guess, today. We're gonna start cutting into these trusses and see what we can get lumber-wise. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Good, good. Chris went with us, what, two years ago on Sunshine, or was it last year? Or I think both it was last, last year. year? Okay, it was probably the first of the season, but we'll have to get out again. Looks like we got some nice longer ones in the middle, so that uh, the length of these will determine how big this bad boy is going to be. So I'll get you guys on a tripod and we'll go from there. Okay, so that's what we got for for now. If we need more, we know where it's at. We can come back. So let's get back to the house. Okay, so we're gonna show you inside this trailer, and then Chris and I are gonna get the ends cut on these boards. We cut the ends square. Had some deadbeat redders that left here, left a uh, bunk bed in my apartment the other day. So I went ahead and utilized it and. We're going to put it in here. I think I'm going to raise it up another six inches so my four-wheeler fits underneath here. Um, just the box on my four-wheeler. But I'm going to build that. I'm going to build that uh, skid house so it'll fit in this trailer with my four-wheeler attached to it. So I'm going to do some measurements real quick. And we will get cutting some boards. Just have Chris feed them to me. Okay, so Chris is making some baits for us. Looking good. Look at those bad boys. Oh yeah. We just got a new mold here from Do It. It's a three and a half inch craw and that's gonna kill them. This is glow green. Good stuff. Okay guys, what I've come up with is an exterior measurement of 80 by 80 interior is going to be about 73 by 73 i've got a leather couch i'm going to put in here it folds into a bed um, looks like it'll take up most of the room but i think i'm going to modify the couch so it only comes into about just under half um, when the couch is set maybe i can get it into here and then i'm thinking about sliding it out with some finger joints on some one by fours to increase my space when I do if I do decide to sleep in it we can slide the couch out and then fold the bed down 
um, putting a door over here, I think, and then maybe a buddy heater here on the back. I kind of re remodified that. I don't know on hole placement. There's four holes there, but I'm also thinking about hinging this with a square, kind of a two by three square, so that if we ever wanted to do some spear fishing, we'd have that option. Um, if we ever go up into Montana, maybe spear some pike. So it's getting late tonight, but we're going to hit it in the morning. We'll get the base going and go from there. I'm thinking right up here on the front here. I don't see why we shouldn't mount a TV. And I got my flasher here and a buddy heater over here. Um, I'm probably put a window over here somewhere maybe. Maybe even make a window in the door as well. So then if you're sitting on the couch, you could set tip ups going in that direction and that direction. And they still fish your rods inside. Okay guys, so it's the next day in the shop. Um, I'm gonna build a fire, clear some space, and we'll start building the floor. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, so as per our plans, we're gonna get six of them cut at 77 inches and two cut at 80. Okay, so I've set up my sawhorse. So it's the exact mark for our 66 inches. Made a crow's foot there. If you can look closely, you'll see the line cast on my crow's foot. This uh, saw has a light in there that casts a shadow on both sides of the blades. I actually prefer it better than a laser. Sometimes in the daytime, it's not as good in the daytime. But uh, over the years, it's served me well. And yeah, I need a new blade. Okay, you guys are gonna laugh at this. This is a layout tool. Um, I've got it. the red ones are for two foot centers, so the orange ones. And these, every white one is a 16 inch center. We're gonna go 16 centers on this today. And the first one you just go in a half, because it's a center. Even though you don't put it there. You basically just transfer these marks. Where do you want your rafters to go? So I think on this one, we're gonna go a two foot center here to here so that we have room for our stuff in the middle like our holes to fish in. So I'm gonna put one here. And then we'll put okay, so I'm gonna basically just lay these boards out. This is my, call that our bottom plate. This will be our top. We'll just start tacking these in. Dad always says we're not building piano. We're certainly not. Okay, so I decided to come out here 20 inches to a mark, and then that gives me 40 inches in the middle. And I can always add a hole here and a hole over there, just with a catch cover. But here I'm going to be able to drill three holes or cut a big square out for sparing. Not the biggest spared hole in the world, but I've never done it, so what do I know? So we'll get that board attached and go from there. Okay guys, so this is a little heavy duty here. But this is a little ABS, a little quarter inch piece of ABS. I got two of them that I bought from my buddy a couple years ago. Had big plans for, but never really did anything with it. So this is a good opportunity to use it. And this will keep all the snow and stuff from getting into my wood and my insulation as we drive down the trail. Okay, so I got this edge here done. Now I'm going to go up to this corner and 
make it flush on that corner, that will square the building, square our floor. So everything going on top of that will work out. Lickety split. I had an old boss tell me the only time I hit the line was when I crossed it. Oh, how things stay the same. And I'll cut this opening out just like it was a window on a house. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I've made a mark just inside the edge of that. I'm going to come down here and measure into my board and transfer it. I'm going a hair inside that board just so I don't have anything sticking out. Heaven forbid we lose a fish because we didn't file the rough edges. Okay guys, so I think we're in the point of the project. I'm going to start putting skis on. And I'm just going to go simple on this, nothing fancy. I'm going to use some of that ABS on the bottom of whatever we build. I'm thinking about just stacking, oh, two or three two by fours on top of one another. And then carving out a slope maybe with the chainsaw or just however we do it so let's get busy so i'm going to go cut some boards at 100 inches uh, we're going to hang it out both sides 10 inches so i'm going to uh, attach the skis down i'm just going to go one layer at a time with four inch grabbers and then we're going to leave the edges long and i'm going to try to carve them up with the chainsaw later um, i've never done this before so i'm just kind of having faith as i go along and hopefully it'll turn out So I just want to let you know, everywhere I have a joist, I'm making sure to get the screw into it, into the joist on this side of the ski, on the inside. So that way, you have double coverage and it's just not going to rock as bad. Hopefully those screws will work in tandem with the joist and keep us happy. I'm using a drill because sometimes if you use an impact, it actually weakens the screw. If you ever have screws on an impact, sometimes they'll actually snap on you. But in my opinion, they get weak, some, some of them. And uh, so I just feel more comfortable in a situation like this, using a screwdriver and uh, just easing them in. Because you'd hate for these to come undone out on the trail. <laughs> so we're just adding a little wood glue on the tips of these skis. Back a couple feet. Um, I cut this board so it's long enough to get where I want it on the front, but it also grabbed this joist back here. So I just want, I don't want it, to, uh, if I cut it too short, I'd, I'd worry about it breaking right in here. So I went ahead and ran it to the next joist section on both front and back. Well, you almost hate to cover that up, that's art. Basically, measured out from the sled, nine and a half inches. Set my board, set my square on there to the nine and a half inch mark right here. Drew a line. And 
Yeah, that's good enough for it's for, I think. Just like carving a teddy bear. <laughs> We're gonna make that work. I like it. I'm gonna go to the table saw to rip these into three and a half, four inch pieces, and we'll come back and attach them. It's coming along. We'll get ready to flip it over here in a minute and might call it a video this time and start part two after this. So we'll be back. Okay, so now we're going to attach these runners. Okay, so guys, I'm trying to countersink these long screws to suck this down. Then I'm going to run to town and grab some ABS glue. Then I'm going to do a fresh piece on top of the piece that's screwed in. So I'm hoping there'll be no uh, points where it's going to catch on the snow. And hopefully this ABS glue will hold in the cold. Usually when you glue pipe together, it's stronger than the, the pipe. The joint is stronger than the pipe. It's, it takes a trick of the trade to undo fittings after you glue them. So I'm hoping the same applies to this. Okay, guys. So now I'm going to uh, try to bend this plastic real quick. Keep heating that. I'm gonna put a screw in, kind of give it some tension. Okay, so I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. I got some multi-purpose glue here for this ABS, and uh, I cut a separate sheet. So now I'm trying to bury all my screws. I'm trying to bury all the screws so we don't have any friction on these skis more than necessary. So put a little glue on there. And like I said, no guarantees. Kind of a crazy idea probably. It's just a thought I had. We'll see if it Pans out, might just fall off, but I don't think so. Usually when you glue a pipe, like I say, it's pretty stout. Whew, I'm getting high. Time to get some ventilation going. get some stuff and weight it down. Yeah, one more time. I think I might put a carriage bolt down the center here, just in case. So I'll have it attached there, there, and there. The carriage bolt will just ensure that it won't come off, and that carriage bolt should wear flat um, once I use the once I use the uh, sled a little bit, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Give the other piece. carriage bolt just in here just because we can. Okay. This is the kind of thing that makes me sleep a little better at night. Get my fingers off here.
Because as we know, it's no fun to break down when you're trying to go fishing. sliver because it didn't all want to come in one shot now we'll be more careful so I just pound that carriage bolt in and it holds itself after you do that Good to go. I'm gonna fold, fold these ends over again and screw them in. And these skis are done. I'll tell you, um, when we left that gap in this two by four, it's kind of fortuitous because we ended up using it for this carriage bolt. So it's funny how things work out sometimes. Even the losers get lucky sometimes. show you what this was designed around this couch I got this isn't my day tripper the day trippers right here that one's permanently mounted in there this one's a find I found on Facebook the other day and we have measured and designed this so that it will fit in this particular setup P.S. I just wanted to show you we had a seam in there on the ABS so I went ahead and cut some strips glued them down and we'll let them cure that way we'll hopefully keep the moisture out when we're going down the, the highway or the trail so thanks again <laughs>